Today I'm going to be giving you the five keys to a disgusting counter. And I mean disgusting in a very, very good way, which I guess that's what people say now. I know that's what I say whenever I want to say something that's like amazing or like un unstoppable. I say disgusting. So that's the new thing in case you didn't know. Anyways, moving on. You'll take your word for it. So the first key to an incredible counter is split stepping. And for those of you that don't know what split stepping is, it's where we split our feet apart, okay, and we're just taking our, our feet about an inch off of the ground. And so we take our feet an inch off of the ground, we're essentially bouncing, we bounce an inch off of the ground, and then we land back on the ground, and then we're ready to react to whatever ball comes to us. Now, the main problem that I see with this, and you'll have a horrible counter if you, if you just don't have the timing right of the split step. So what I'll see with a lot of amateur and beginner players even some intermediate players, is they'll be split-stepping when the ball bounces on their side. Or they'll be split-stepping when the ball has crossed the plane of the net. Or, or they'll be split-stepping as soon as they, they hit, they then jump, right? And I'm being honest with this. I see this all the time. What we, what we need to do is make sure that we're split-stepping at the right time. And so a saying that I like to use to be able to know when to split-step is when they hit, we split Okay? It's cheesy, it's corny, but it works. So whenever our opponent is making contact with the ball, that's when we need to split. So why? Why should we split step? Okay, Why should we just do it just because I say so? Or just because all of the pros do it, right? Or all the high-level players do it? The reason that we split step is because it increases our reaction time. Yeah, I don't know the exact data. The scan data matches exactly the exact data points of how much it increases our reaction time, but it's a lot. I have looked at them before. I read it in a book once. But whenever we're moving our feet, when we split step, it sends signals to our brain and makes us our reaction times way quicker than if we're just stagnantly standing there. So split stepping allows us to be able to react quicker to the ball, and that's why it's point number one on how to have a disgusting counter. Okay, so the second key to an incredible counter is shifting. And what shifting is, is it's where we're taking our feet maybe just a, a couple of centimeters off of the ground and we're shifting in a certain direction to be able to then counter the ball. So if we're playing any half-decent players, they know that the goal is to hit their opponent's right uh, dominant hip, not right, because maybe you're lefty, their dominant hip or their dominant shoulder. Okay, or just somewhere along their dominant side. And the reason for that is it's difficult to hit a backhand there, and it's nearly impossible to hit a forehand there. And so the reason that we want to shift is to be able to open up that backhand for us to be able to counter powerfully. Because if we're countering from this position with the chicken wing going on, it's not coming off as, as, a, as an effective counter. It might be decently effective, but you're probably going to pop it up. It's probably going to be too soft. They're going to hit the same shot at you again. So shifting, we split step, we're shifting, and we're shifting to whatever side is our dominant side. So for lefty, we're shifting to the left. For righty, we're shifting to the right. And the reason that I say that is because 90% of your counters off that first shot should be a backhand. You should be going for a backhand. The reason for that is because you have so much more reach with your backhand. You can go all the way to here, all the way to here. The only spot that's bad for your backhand and better for your forehand is right here but you can still hit a backhand with it, okay? Whereas this could be a forehand, but then someone comes at your hip here. I, I mean, it hurts my arm just trying to do this right now. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Also, if they're hitting anywhere over to the left of you, that's obviously a backhand. Anywhere to the right of you, you want to be able to counter on that backhand side. But if they do hit to the right of you, we're shifting, okay? We're sliding over, and now we're countering that ball more towards the middle of our body, maybe even on our left side if we recognize it quickly enough. So then it comes down to recognition, okay? We don't always know where that ball is going to go, especially if they have a really good speed up. So it comes down to, okay, I've made my decision. I'm going to be hitting a backhand. Sometimes I'll shift, and then they end up going to my backhand, and then it just comes down to reaching and hitting a backhand. 
if you shift and they end up going way far to your right, ball's going out. If you're on the even side, if you're not on the even side, your, your partner's got it. Hopefully they've got it because they should be covering the middle. So I'm saying right as in you're on the right side of the court. You're playing the even side. Uh, obviously that ball's going to go wide if they hit way out wide. So that's point number two. Okay, so the third key that we're going to be talking about is the angle of our paddle. So we want our, and, and not to say that I'm never going to hit a forehand counter. You probably are if they hit it way over there. But if you and your partner have good enough communication and you guys have played enough together, you know that they've got that middle ball for you if you're on the odd side. And then, like I said before, it's totally out if it goes to your forehand when you're on the even side. So counter with your backhand. That's all you have to focus on. Someone who has, I think, the best counter in the men's uh, pro division is James Ignatowicz. Okay? And, and what makes his counter so good is not only his wrist strength, he has a ton of wrist strength, but it's the angle at which he holds his paddle. So that's the next point is the angle of our paddle. So he has his paddle angled down. And what I mean by down is it isn't towards the ground like this. Obviously, that's not going to work. That's obvious. But it's angled downward with a slight downward trajectory. And the reason that you want to do that is if you counter, someone speeds up the ball, they can only speed up, up. They can only hit the ball up when they speed up. Unless you hit them a really cake ball and they can hit down on it, then I'd suggest scooting back and not countering the ball at all. That's when it's time to get defensive. But for counters, you're going to be countering a ball because they sped up a ball that's kind of neutral. Maybe it was low. So it has to come up. Anyways, what we're focused on is the angle of our paddle. We're having the angle of our paddle downward so that we can get it at the feet of our opponent. So they speed up. We then hit at the feet of our opponent. Let's say they pick up that ball. Chances are it's a pop-up and we're putting that ball away. So super simple tip, but make sure that when you're drilling and practicing, you have that angle down. You have that paddle angled downward. Uh, that way that you're hitting it at their feet. You're setting yourself up for the next shot. Be ready for that shot to come back. If they're a halfway decent player, they'll probably get it back. If your counter is so powerful that they don't, you're welcome because I helped with that. Okay, so that brings us to point number four, which is staying low, okay? Keeping a low center of gravity. So split stepping already helps us to stay low because our knees are bent. We're bouncing up and down, right? Um, we're staying low so that when they do speed up the ball, our body is already low with where the ball will be and our paddle's already there with where the ball will be. So then our paddle can be at the same trajectory as our face, which is where we're seeing everything and our reaction time's quicker. So essentially we're bending our knees and keeping that slight knee bend is actually sending signals to our brain of, of a quicker reaction time as well. So we're staying low and then we can counter that shot, that next shot that comes at us a lot easier because the, our paddle and the ball is going to be at the same trajectory as our eyes are. So staying low is super important. Uh, something that I see a lot is people will be standing straight up and down. On your knees. Okay, and they're not ready for an attack at all. You can speed up the ball at those people and hit them tons, tons and tons. So look out for that. Obviously, not everybody will be watching this, um, but for those that aren't and still stand up straight, Punish them, Punish them, right? Speed up that ball at them. They won't be able to get out of the way. They won't be able to react in time because they're standing straight up and down. You're going to be a lot quicker, more agile. If you got that slight knee bend, you're low, got a low center of gravity. You also have greater balance. So that's the way to go with that. Okay, so this brings us to our last and final point that I want to cover with you guys. And that is recognizing an out ball. And I know we've all heard before, if it's shoulder high, let it fly, right? And then you hear people that come in and they're like, well, hey, what if I'm 5'4"? Go, go it's like, I think you know what to do there, okay? If you're 5'4", then maybe if it's head high, let it fly, right? But just going into more depth with that, the point's instantly over if we just let that ball go out. But it comes down to recognizing it before they hit the shot. So the best tip that I can give you guys is if you see your opponents have a big backswing, are they going to dink that ball? No. If they do dink the ball, will you be ready for it? Yeah, because it's a dink. You have time. So if they, and then they dink the ball, no. You, you've got it, right? 
Um, so if they have that big backswing and they end up speeding it up, the ball's going out. You can't have that big of a backswing and swing and the ball not go out. No! Oh. Oh. If you see that they're speeding up a lower ball, so let's say you hit a dink and it's super low, all of a sudden they speed it up, get out of the way. Because if it's that low and they speed it up, chances are it's going out. And let's say you're wrong, okay? Let's say you're wrong on it. Let's say that the ball was literally that far off the ground, three inches, four inches off the ground. They sped it up. You got out of the way, and it landed on the baseline. Is that something that we should be upset about? Yes. I don't think so, okay? The odds of them being able to do that every single time, very, very low, uh, if at all. Um, if they're actually committed to a true speed up. And so if, if they do get that shot, I'd give them a nice clap and just say, nice shot. Like, genuinely, I would. I would just say that's an incredible shot. When I've been beat, like, something like that, and it's an incredible shot, it's, it's just you deserve a, a compliment for it, in my opinion. Um, and it's not going to affect the way that I play the next point. It's not going to affect uh, if I move out of the way on the next time that I see you speed that up because you're not hitting the next one in. There's a very low low chance. So those are the two two things. Big backswing, get out of the way. If the ball is low and you see that they speed it up, get out of the way. Obviously, nothing's impossible. They can still hit these shots in, so be prepared for that. But the best way to learn and recognize um, when a ball is actually going to go out is by getting out of the way and learning the hard way, right? Sometimes it's going to go in, and then it just becomes muscle memory, um, which I don't know if muscle memory is the right word for it, but it becomes just... Um, cognitive to us to know exactly if the ball is going out or if it's going in to where we don't really have to think about it much right it's just in the back of our mind it's just like oh out of the way and it wasn't like oh shoulder high let it fly right it was just the fact of i i automatically know based off of the trajectory of the ball that you just hit that it's going out or it's staying in so if you guys can cannot hit out balls you'll you'll win a ton more points and you won't even have to worry about countering but those are the five keys to a disgusting counter like we talked about before. I hope that this has been enjoyable for you guys. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, um, if you guys want any Selkirk gear, I'm a Selkirk-sponsored content creator. You guys can use code ADV-PLAYBOOK. I'll put it in the bio of this video. You guys can get their new Lux paddle. It looks like this. Uh, I just finished playing in a 5.5 tournament, ended up winning. Um, I had been playing with this paddle for two days, super easy adjustment period, great for control, insane amount of spin, um, and then somehow I can still get tons of power with it. So it just kind of it launches off it. I absolutely love it. Um, I felt like my counters and my resets were just on absolute fire. Anyway, so if you guys want to use that code, you'll get a free gift card to Selkirk. Uh, I think it'll be a $30 gift card. Um, if you guys want to use that, help support the channel. Just if you're planning to buy one or buy anything Selkirk, um, that would really help me out. And I'll be able to keep making these videos for you guys. Hope this has been helpful. Make sure to ring that bell for my next videos. I upload a video every week. And be sure to subscribe. And I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.